Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari ST games, some which I grew up with, and some which are new to me. Today is a bit of both, really, because I've actually played the PC version of this, but I've never played the Atari ST version, so it's going to be interesting to sort of compare and contrast, as it were. Today we're playing Nigel Mansell's World Championship, which was a 1993 release from Gremlin Graphics, developed by Damien Hibbard and Kevin Dudley, with graphics by Damon Godley and music by Patrick Fillan. If that's how you pronounce his name, apologies if not. It's based on some of the tech that Gremlin created for the Lotus Turbo Challenge and Top Racer series, notably the full screen road routines found in Lotus 2 and Top Gear 2. And the game pays homage to the career of Nigel Mansell, who, if you're not familiar, was a British racing driver who was primarily active between 1980 and 1995, but he's remained a beloved presence in motorsports ever since. So he's competed in more races and he's participated in TV coverage of motorsports and all sorts of things. So he's, uh, he's kind of still relevant if you're into motorsports. So let's go play Nigel Mansell's World Championship. Okay, here we are with Nigel Mansell's World Championship for Atari ST. Um, so before we start, we do have a copy protection thing to get through here, which is based on a code wheel. Uh, I do actually have a copy of this game, but it's it's actually the PC version that I've got. Uh, so I'm hoping that the code wheel is the same for all the versions. So let's find out. So what we need to do is we need to match those two symbols on the code wheel. Uh, so there's helmet with one stripe. And helmet with lots of stripes. That's that, I think. Um, is that right? Yes. Please enter the value in window 28. If I can find where window 28 is. It's it's that sort of anti-photocopy black on black print. Um, where is it? 24, 25. Well, they are in order at least. 26, 27, 28. The value is 57. Okay, it does work. Um, yeah, so regardless of platform you're playing this on, if it's Atari ST, Amiga, or MS-DOS PC, it seems the code wheel is the same. So that's a nice relief. So we are now loading. Despite owning a PC copy of this, I've not played it a great deal. Uh, I've not played it a great deal because I think, I think this is one we acquired via my brother. Um, it was probably a review copy of his or something like that. So I don't remember spending a ton of time with it. Possibly because I was a bit young at the time to really appreciate what it was doing. But I don't, I don't know, because I mean, I've always liked racing games. ST conversion, Kevin Dudley and Dr. H. Original programming, Dr. H. And blah, 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 blah. Right. Okay. So we've got a series of options here. Um, let me just have a look at the manual that I have on hand uh, and see what these are. Ooh. Gremlin Graphics recommend that you use the freewheel joystick when you play Nigel Mansell World Championship for added realism. The freewheel is a unique joystick which behaves like a real steering wheel. If you turn it to the left, then your on-screen vehicle will turn to the left and so on. It's it's like a... I think I remember this thing. It's like a sort of, sort of gyroscope based thing. Um, so it's like a very early implementation of motion controls. Uh, I remember it not being very good, but it it is compatible with this. Right, so we have several options. We can race a single circuit. Um, improve with Mansell lets you choose any of the 16 circuits. Nigel Mansell will then drive around the circuit, showing you the racing line and giving indications of the optimum speed and gears to be used on corners. Then there's the full race season. Uh, and then there's driving school, which lets you practice on any of the tracks without having to worry about other cars. Additionally, the maximum car speed is controlled and a lap time to match will be presented on screen. The player must beat that time before the maximum speed of the car will increase up to the next speed and the new time to beat will be indicated on the screen. That's interesting. Okay. All right, let's have a look at the control selection first. So choose controller. Uh, joystick, keyboard, mouse, free will, digital. Right, left, right, accelerate on fire. Brake is fire and back. Up gear is forward, down gear is back. Okay, sounds good to me. Change drivers. Okay, so you can change you can change your name and team as well. 
Okay, cool. Oh, but it... You cycle through them using the fire button, so if you miss the one you want... You have to cycle all the way around. So presumably we can change our name here. How do we do that? Apparently we can't change our name there. Anyway, alright, we're Nigel Mansell. Uh, choose Preferences. Panel, Full Race, Arcade. Gears Auto. Speed miles per hour, level normal, professional, championship. We'll stick with normal. Let's keep things nice and easy for now. Let's have a go at this driving school thing, first of all. Let's pick a reasonably straightforward looking course. Alright, let's go for... Over Germany, that doesn't look too hard. Please wait, loading. And actually, quite decent quality digitized shot of the man himself there. With the moustache. Is the moustache disappeared at one point? I don't know if he came back. But certainly, he was famous for having the moustache when he was an active racing driver. Press escape to quit. I don't want to quit. Okay, so I guess, I guess to begin with, we are limited to second gear because I I can't I can't change up. Well, I've changed up to third now. Is that just because I was going downhill? Yeah, my speed is definitely limited to like 107 miles per hour. So I guess I've got to beat that time in the top left without being able to go any faster than 107 miles per hour. And the dotty line on the road should help me to follow the optimal racing line. Presentation of this is actually quite interesting. Like I said in the intro, there, there was... This is at least partially based on the stuff that they developed for um, Lotus Turbo Challenge and Top Gear. But like the road and some of these objects look a lot more um, polygonal. Obviously there are, there are some sprites. But they've got a good number of frames of animation on them which makes them... look like they're quite convincingly scaling. And then when you look at the bridges and things and like the tunnels and stuff like that, there we are, that that, that looks like it's made of polygons. Alright, so we beat the time on the first lap, so now we can go up to 128 kilometers an hour, uh, miles per hour rather. And we need to beat a slightly faster lap time. Now, despite the polygonal road, um, the gameplay in this is still very much Vanishing Point Racer. So as you steer left and right, you are changing your relative position on the track rather than actually turning the car, as it were. And what corners do is that they're pushing you towards their outside edge. So you have to steer around them to counterbalance that effect that they have on you. 
and if you're going too fast the corner will have a greater effect than your cornering so that's when you need to actually slow down This is not bad at all, actually. Frame rate could perhaps be better, especially when we compare this to something like Vroom, which is still sort of the benchmark of Atari ST racing games, particularly from this perspective. But the, the controls are responsive. Getting around each corner feels nice and snappy. And I just I just feel like I'm in complete control of the car, even on those tight corners like that. Yeah, this is good stuff. May have to see if I can get the PC version up and running to um, compare and contrast how it runs. I'm sure it can't be that difficult to get it running in DOSBox or something since I don't have a like a a DOS based PC I could just you could just install it on which is a bit of a shame that is something I'd like to do at some point but uh, it is not something I've got around to doing just yet because if you're doing that as a project it's a little bit difficult to know where to where to kind of tune it like, if I was to build the ultimate 90s gaming PC, exactly what point in the 90s do I do I stop at? Do I make the best possible performance for MS-DOS gaming, or Windows 95 gaming, or, or, or what? Okay, anyway, we get, we get the idea of that. So let's have a look at a proper race. Shame there doesn't seem to be an option for music during races because that engine sound is while it's not quite as bad as Lotus Turbo Challenge's engine sound it's uh, a little bit grating <laughs> all right let's go for Britain this time circuit link 2.969 miles built on the site of a wartime bomber base and using former runways this is an extremely fast circuit it's renowned for the fast hard corners which put extreme forces on the drivers, which means accurate corning is, is cornering is essential. Uh, so it's raining. Um, a tune car. What can we do here? So tires. We obviously want wet tires if it's raining. Uh, auto gears. All right. Let's go qualify. I'm not expecting much from my own skills in this, but we shall see, I guess. We are just playing on the easiest difficulty level. Alright. Mansell coming out of the pits. Straight onto the grass. Oh, that's a bit faster than we were dealing with before. This is one of those games where learning the circuits is going to be of enormous benefit to you, I feel. Oh god. Out of my way, Slowpoke. I'm Nigel fucking Mansell.
F1 off-road champion 1993. Go on, get get round the get to round the corner. Okay, well, I don't know if that's good or not. Let's do a couple more laps just to get a feel for this circuit because I'm really not getting a feel for it just yet. Alright, nice long straight. Tight corner coming up at the end, so ease off the gas a bit. That's the stuff. Stay on the bloody road, Mansell. Little wibbly wobbly bit coming up. Around the wibbly wobbly bit. Chicane, I believe they call that in the business. And another reasonably long straight. Slight left. And then the really horrible bit. Right, slow down. Slow right down for this nonsense here. Maybe faster than 25 miles an hour, though. Okay, good. That felt better. That felt better, but it was significantly slower. Hmm. <laughs> Where am I? Is that the back or the front? That's the front! How did- how? I'm not gonna complain. I'm not gonna complain. I'm just gonna take it. Throw it down, Mansell! Yeah, the frame rate is making this a little bit difficult to judge in it at times, but... I mean, it, it's not awful, but also... There are races that run a lot better than this on the Atari ST. Like I said, the aforementioned Vroom is probably the best example. But, I mean, it's, it's not terrible. It, it's speedy and it's still responsive. It's still responsive, and that's the important thing. So, like, even if the screen isn't updating as frequently as you might like it to, the actual controls are still responsive, so you, you remain in control of your car. You feel like you can make it around these corners. And you do actually need to ease off the accelerator to get around a lot of these corners. Which gives a a little bit more of a simulation feel than this might otherwise have. But you know, looking back on a lot of old races, the the need to actually slow down for corners is a lot more widespread than you might assume. Because it, it's very easy to assume that classic vanishing point races are all just hold down the accelerator button and just steer around corners. But in fact, even a lot of the most arcadey ones out there, stuff like Outrun, Lotus, Top Gear, all that sort of thing, even the most arcadey ones demand that you slow down for tight corners. Final lap! Right, come on. Oh, 
Oh no! Okay, so you can have nasty crashes. You can't crash yourself out of the race completely, but you can have a nasty crash that will stop you for a couple of seconds. Oh, nasty. I'll be happy with the podium. Out of my way. Mustache coming through. I'm actually quite enjoying this. I can tell how much I'm enjoying a racing game by how tightly I'm gripping the controller. And I'm gripping the controller very tightly in this game. Oh, I do not like this bit. Do not like... Alright, come on, podium. That'll do. Not bad. 20 seconds behind Gerhard Berger. I'll take it. I'll take it, I tell you. So the World Championship mode, I guess you just go through all of those tracks in order. And uh, earn tournament points as you go. The one last thing I do want to try is this Improve with Mansell mode. So if we take a look at the same track we just did, if we take a look at the Britain track, this should drive a sample lap for us and explain the best way to handle it. So let's see what the man himself has to say. Press escape to quit. Get going then. Oh, you mean I have to drive? Okay, fair enough. Keep on the racing line. Too fast for right bend. Get on that racing line. Come on, speed up. Do not hit things, thanks. Thanks, Nigel. Avoid objects. I can't say your advice is the most helpful thing I've ever seen, Nigel. Okay, I get the idea. I was hoping for some slightly more specific advice than that. Um, but I guess... I guess that can sort of help you to learn the tracks a little bit in that he does call out the times when you should be speeding up and the times when you should be preparing for corners and that sort of thing. But I was hoping for some slightly more track-specific stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, that's not as great as it could be. The rest of the game, though, yeah, that's good fun. That's good fun. I'm intrigued to try the PC version because I suspect that will perform better than this one. And probably look nicer as well because it will be 256 colour VGA instead of 16 colours uh, Atari ST graphics. Um, but yeah, that's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. Um, and I'm glad I've finally tried that. Uh, like some other stuff that I played recently, playing the Atari version here has intrigued me enough to want to check out some other versions of it as well. But the Atari ST version is no slouch. I'd probably still play Room instead if I wanted to play a game like this. Um, but this is certainly a, a decent enough option, particularly if you're, a, if you're a fan of Red 5 himself. Anyway, let's leave that there for now. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.